How are you guys this evening? Um, I'm going to be doing a lesson in Obadiah. And I, I, will, I don't yeah, I have my Bible. Hold on. Wasn't prepared, was I? But I'm going to be doing a lesson in Obadiah. Uh, it was a request from one of my subscribers, Melissa. You can go to any of my videos and most all of them and look in the comments, click on Melissa Morand, her picture. It'll take you to her channel and she um, goes through several books of the Bible and reads it in a very unique and soothing way. And uh, she's a very kind-hearted, sweet sister. So I recommend you, recommend you guys, if you want to listen to the Bible read to you, to go to Melissa's channel and and, and hear her read. It's very profitable. But I've got some notes here that I've gathered to give a little summary to uh, Obadiah. The twin brothers Esau and Jacob were in a battle, a fist fight from the womb to birth. Esau's descendants were the Edomites and Jacob's descendants were the Israelites. Obadiah was a, a ghost writer. We knew he was there, but we don't know much about him. There were many Obadiahs um, in Old Testament time. It was a rather common name. Obadiah means servant of Yahweh in Hebrew. Um, this prophecy was around 587 B.C. after the Babylonian captivity, captivity and during the ministry of Jeremiah the prophet. What Obadiah wrote, was what he saw in a vision from God. Okay, so we'll start here in Obadiah, verse 1 and 2. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom, We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise, and let us rise up against her for battle. Obadiah had a revelation from God like we get from the Holy Spirit, as did the apostles. He is sounding the alarm that God is preparing a judgment for Edom. There will be no allegiance from the surrounding neighbors of Edom. Israel was God's people in the apple of his eye. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, you who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. Edom was an arrogant and strong nation, all weathered, living high in the mountains, living in the craggy rocks and caves for shelter, thinking they were exempt from danger. And they most assuredly thought that they were exempt from the wrath of God. If thieves have come among you, if robbers by night, oh how will, oh how you will be cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If grape gatherers had come to you, would they not have left some gleanings? Oh how Esau shall be searched out! How, how his hidden treasures shall be sought after! Edom's, uh, a thief takes quickly and then departs. The grape harvester picks the ripe and leaves the not so ready to not strip every cluster away. The enemies of Edom would spare nothing, leaving Edom bare. Esau is Edom as a whole. The rocks and caves they hid in would be thoroughly searched. Their enemies pilfered all their goods. All the men in your confederacy shall force you to the border. The men at peace with you shall deceive you and prevail against you. Those who eat your bread shall lay a trap for you. No one is aware of it. Edom's enemies usually pass them by because of the difficult terrain in which they lived. The neighbors bordering Edom 
thought their allies deceived them, turning their back. Their friendship deceived them. Will I not in that day, says the Lord, even destroy the wise men of Edom and understanding from the mountains of Esau? Then your mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that everyone from the mountains of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. People traveled from afar to hear Edom's wise counsel and their superstitions, wanting to gaze at their treasures they hid on earth. God will destroy Edom's wise and understanding. Taman takes its name from the grandson of Esau. They were known for their courage. They will have no heart to go out against the enemy. They will give up in fright. God's wrath prevails to the end for his people. And the, last, the next lesson I will do will be on Obadiah 10 through 16 next. So until next time.